Good morning. Welcome to our uh, CBCB Discipleship Center. You have first time come to hear the worship God with us after the service. It can take for a while. You can enjoy the free coffee and the fellowship with our brother and sister in Christ. I'm Pastor Chong. The container will translate for this morning. Let's continue on in our current sermon series, Jesus is the Answer. Today our scripture text can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 1 to 5. The wisdom of the cross. The wisdom of the cross is God's wisdom. The wisdom of God is completely different from the wisdom of man. We believe that we are wise, we are full of wisdom if our IQ is very high. But in reality, that is not a case. If you just merely increase your IQ, and you have not increased in your wisdom or knowledge of other things, and those are just uh, doomed, those are just uh, vain wisdom. In the past 20, 30 years, there's a new kind of crime that is um, more prevalent. It's called cybercrime. And this happens all over the world. And the Hong Kong government, they established a new department just to focus on this crime. And those who are involved in these kind of crimes are people with very, very high IQ. They have high intelligence. But sad to say, they use their knowledge to commit crime. In during, uh, during the Second World War, it was the first time in the, uh, human history that we used an, uh, an atomic bomb to, to destroy. And the very first atomic bomb that detonated uh, in, in uh, Japan is called Little Boy. And uh, during that time, uh, the, during the first detonation, it, they killed 140,000 people. Of course, that was only those who died during that day, and we have not yet counted those who have suffered from its side effects. This little boy is a product of human intelligence. But this is not what God once this is not God's wisdom. Then what is God's wisdom? Let's look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Look at Psalms 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. True wisdom comes from God. Because God is the, the uh, starting point, the origin of all wisdom. The whole chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians, Paul just discussed one topic, that is the wisdom of God. Why was there division in the church in Corinth? Because they failed to understand what God's wisdom truly is. And they try to solve the differences they have in church with human wisdom. That's why they form cliques, they form groups in the church, and there was a massive division there. That's why they are church. We cannot use human ways and human wisdom to, to, uh, to be the administrator of the church, to uh, control the church. In today's world, wisdom, knowledge is uh, increasing. 
Because a lot of, well, we have a lot of management resources for us to learn from. But, but please remember, if you bring all the things that you have learned from the world and apply it into the church, then the church will never be successful. You know why? When the church is super organized, and we have a lot of restrictions. Yeah, very good. Very good. It, we might feel that it's very good. Chairman. But please, uh, let me ask you. Now we are bottom line. And what is the bottom line? What is the purpose of the church? We are not there to earn money. But we are there to win souls. What is more important? Human. We may be very organized, but there are no people who are willing to come to the church. Then everyone would leave the church. Is the church successful or not? May the Lord help us. Management in itself is not bad. We have to use God's wisdom to manage the church. The wisdom of the cross is God's wisdom. And what is the wisdom of the cross? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, it that tells us the wisdom of the cross is not about eloquence nor human wisdom. The wisdom of the cross is Christ and Him crucified. The wisdom of the cross is the demonstration of the, spir- of the Spirit's power. Let me explain. Let me explain. Number one, Number one the wisdom of the cross is not about eloquence nor human wisdom. In chapter 2, verse 1, Brothers and sisters, when I, come, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence nor or human wisdom as I proclaim to you the testimony of, about God. NIV the testimony about God. The uh, NIV translation uh, translated to the testimony of God. the mystery of God. Or, we can also uh, translate it into as uh, the mystery of God. This word mystery is often uh, intertwined with uh, religious things. There are three very uh, special mysteries in the Bible. This is, uh, this is the mystery of God. If you are to look at Ephesians chapter 3, verses 3 to 4, that is the mystery made known to me by the revel- by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then you will be able to understand my insights into the mystery of Christ. The three kinds of mystery. Mystery of God. Mystery of the, of the gospel. And mystery of Christ. But it's just the same thing. God's mystery is the mystery of the gospel. It is also the mystery of Christ. It's merely explaining it from different points of view. Then what is the mystery of God? What is the mystery of the gospel? What is the mystery of Christ? It's God became man. And uh, to, to come here to this world. To die on the cross for your sins and my sins. And he solved the problems and he took upon himself the burden and the, the cost of our sins. He died on the cross for you and me. And on the third day, he rose again from the grave. And he will come again for the second time. That is the God's mystery, the mystery of the gospel, and the mystery of Christ. Paul said, When I came to you, I did not preach to you with eloquence nor human wisdom. What do we mean when we say uh, eloquence? Eloquence does that just mean uh, you have, not only does it mean that you are 
are very good in speaking. But it's how skillful you are in expressing yourself. That is the meaning of the word eloquence. During the Second World War, there are two very there were two very famous uh, characters or or, or pe- persons or people in during World War II, and they are, they were well known for their eloquence. First is Adolf Hitler of Germany. The, the other is Winston Churchill of England. And both of them were well known for their eloquence. They, their words have power. They speak more power. Their, their words have more power than all the military uh, combined. That's what we call by eloquence. What do we mean when we say human wisdom? It's an elite level human intelligence. Paul said, When I came to the church in Corinth, I did not preach to you about the gospel of uh, the misery of the gospel with human eloquence nor human wisdom. But first, you need to understand. Uh, 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 Christianity has no, has no, uh, it has never been against uh, human wisdom. We are not against it. Because we believe that human wisdom comes from God. Eloquence is a gift from God. Remember when God called Moses? Moses said, no, 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 no. Moses said, no. You know what was the reason given by Moses? Moses said, I am slow in speech. I don't know how to speak. But in fact, Moses was a very eloquent person. Maybe, maybe. But maybe. Maybe because he spent 40 years in the wilderness. That he rarely spoke with human beings. Would speak with him. You speak with the sheep. He would just speak with the sheep most of the time. And most of the time, he'll just hear and listen to the sheep bleeding. So that's why he said, I'm, I'm slow in speech. And how did God respond? The Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouth, who make them deaf or mute, who gives them in sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. God is the one who gives us gifts, the gift of speech and gives us the intelligence to know what to say. It probably if you've been in CBCP long enough, you have to have heard me I share this testimony. When I was about seven to ten years old, when I, when I speak, I stutter. And my mother would always say to me, speak slowly. But, one, but once I am, uh, when I'm anxious or I'm, I'm, I'm uh, under pressure, I would stutter. Don't follow me. But I don't know how God changed and transformed me. Because God wants, wanted me to fulfill his work. But please remember, Paul was not somebody who was, who, who was slow in speech. God, uh, Paul was not a person without wisdom or intelligence. Paul was born in Tarsus. And during that time, Tarsus was the center of education in the whole world. It was filled with a lot of uh, philosophy, philosophy and, and a lot of different kinds of intelligence and wisdom. So it was a center of education. Every, everyone who wants to seek higher education would go there. And during that time, uh, Paul, Paul's rabbi was the most uh, famous rabbi called um, uh, Gamaliel. 
所以用献祭会嚟解释。所以用用献祭嚟解释。保罗是献献金全世界第一出名学堂，咪咪嘅咪个是哈佛多 Stanford 毕业嘅人啦。We could say that Paul, in today's term, is probably a graduate of Harvard University. 呢个学问，呢个地位，唔系输任何一个人。And his education would not be inferior to anybody. 但保罗讲一句话。Paul said， 我唔不用啱你讲嘅话，咁你嚟同讲上帝 message。I've never spoken God's message to you with human eloquence. You know why? You know why? Acts chapter eighteen， 出咗第十八章。In Acts chapter eighteen， 是保罗去哥林多传福音嘅记载。That was the record of Paul going to、uh, the church in Corinth to preach. But in chapter seventeen, it talks about Paul going to Athens to preach. Athens was the center was the center of Greek culture during that time. When Paul entered Athens, there are two different groups of people who came. To him to debate. Look at chapter seventeen, verse eighteen. He be good, 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 Two groups of people were very eloquent. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say here. Two highly skilled fighters. It's very fun to watch two groups, ah, two two highly skilled individuals fighting each other. During the debate, it would have been very entertaining because they would have answers to for each other. It's Good to see a battle between two highly skilled individuals. But at, at, at the end, they brought Paul to another place. What's the a place? It's called Areopagus. And what is Areopagus? That is the center of of、uh, of culture and education for the whole Greek. Everything that is important, that is vital for them, was debated there. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to go to this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just like in our Congress today, I have a chance to visit this place. Just So what was the result? It was not a very good result. In、uh, verse thirty-two, when they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, "said We want to hear."、Uh, we want to hear you again on this subject. And the Bible said, "Only a few accepted the Lord." I don't know. 可能是这个原因，可能这个原因。Maybe because of this reason, Paul understood one thing. Paul understood one thing. You know, call 口仔 ，call 智慧，咁样嚟辩论，学业嘅工作，未发，冇一空间起来啦。If you are to debate with other people using eloquence and human wisdom, then the work of the gospel will never expand. 我讲讲咧，冇反对智慧，冇。Again, I would like to reiterate that we are not against human wisdom nor eloquence. But for us to be able to lead people to Christ, it takes much more than these. So they see Joe chapter. That's why in chapter four, verse twenty. Because 上帝国无在乎言语，上帝国在乎权能 power. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. For a person to accept Christ, it is the work of the Holy Spirit in that in the heart of that person. Let me share with you a testimony. It must have been at least fifteen years ago. I received a phone call. I was invited by somebody to share the gospel to another person. I know this person, but not very well. 
And he was asking me to share the gospel to somebody who was a complete stranger to me. But I know for the fact that this stranger that I was to share the gospel with was facing great difficulties. In fact, he was contemplating suicide. That's why I was invited to share the gospel with that person, to speak with that person. Okay. And I said, okay. But, but he will not be able to meet with you in Manila. And I said, why? He feared for his life because there were people who were trying to kill him in Manila. Just, uh, I'm, I was requested to drive to the highway to meet with that person. And then from the, high, uh, from the highway, we'll proceed to a province. I don't know why. And I immediately said, okay, I don't know why. But when in hindsight I was thinking, when I'm thinking about it, I said this must have been so foolish. I don't know that person. What if I go there and I get kidnapped? Even though I don't have any money. But the church may be able to pay my ransom. Or they might they might just kill me. But I went there. So I met with him in a, in a certain point in the highway. And then we drove together to the province. So I spoke with the person. To make the long story short, after conversing with him for a while, I discovered how deep and how big his problem is. Problems are, are his problems are. I spoke with him and his wife, and I shared the gospel with them, and I prayed for them. So after that, I left. Last year, I met this person. And he said to me, Pastor, do you still remember me? Aren't you the person who had? who requested me to meet with a stranger. And, and he said, it's good that you still remember. And I said, sure. Because it's the first time for me to experience such a thing. Of course, it left a, a deep mark in my memory. And he said, Pastor, do you know that person has, had accepted Christ together with his wife, especially his wife. And they are, uh, they are very active in the, in the church. Of course, not in Manila. And I was asking myself, whose work is this? This is not something that I did. I did nothing. I did not do anything. In fact, I don't have the power to do anything for him. But it is the work of the Holy Spirit. The, the work of the cross is the work of God. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. So may the Lord help us. The wisdom of the cross is human wisdom, human eloquence. It's not dependent on human wisdom nor human eloquence. But it is solely the work of the Holy Spirit. Number two. Number two. The work of the cross is the work of God. The wisdom of the cross is Christ and Him crucified. Look at chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. Paul said, I know of nothing else except for two things. But these two things can be combined into one. It's just two sides of one coin. I only know about Christ, Jesus Christ, and Him crucified. Why is, do I only want to know these two things? Because Jesus Christ is the center of God's plan. Jesus, Jesus is the anointed one. In Greek, it's called Messiah. Whenever somebody will be, uh, will be uh, inaugurated into that position, they have to be anointed. It's a si symbol that this person has been set aside to serve the Lord. These are the kings, these are the priests, these are the judges. Jesus is the Messiah 
that God has proclaimed. He was sent by God to come to this world to be our Messiah. Jesus is the one and only Savior of this whole world. That's why Jesus Christ is the center of God's plan. Without Christ, none of God's plan will come to uh, to fruition. Look at chap- Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Jesus Christ is the one anointed by, by our God to be our Lord and Messiah. That's why Paul said, I know of nothing else except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Because only Jesus Christ and His crucifixion can solve all human problems. Just think about it. You, know, you may know all things. You may know all that, is, that there is to know in this world. But you are, if you are not able to solve your, the problem of your own sin and of your own death, then what matter it is to know everything? That's why Paul said, I know of nothing else except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Why do we speak about a cross? Because the cross is the center of God's work. That is the method of God's work. God used the, the, the cross to fulfill His work. Why did God use the cross? The cross is a very cruel method. It's in fact a very shameful method. That's why uh, Roman people can never be crucified. That's why Paul was not crucified. Because uh, Paul was a Roman citizen. He was beheaded. He was uh, never crucified. Because for the, for the Roman people, the cross is something that is so shameful and so cruel. Those who are crucified, they don't immediately die. They have to wait until every drop of their blood is, has, been, has been shed. And you said no. And, and you would say, no, that's not the case because Jesus and the two other uh, thieves who died with him just died immediately on that day. No. Look at the Bible carefully. You know, when a person is crucified, when they're there on the cross, it's, they're only held up there by the nails. So the whole body would sag. And your lungs would, would just uh, 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 collapse and compress there. So how do you breathe? And you would use your knees to prop your body up to breathe and then you go down again and you go up. So that's why the Bible said that's why they, they deliberately broke the legs of the two thieves so they will not be able to prop themselves up. That's why they died. How about Jesus? How about Jesus Christ? But they came before Jesus Jesus was already dead. Why? So that's why they never broke his leg. But in the minds of the Roman people, he should not have died so soon. So they used a method. They used a spear. They, they, uh, they used a, sp- a spear to pierce his side. To see if he's truly dead or not. So as they pull, as they pulled out the spear, uh, the Bible recorded something that people during that time cannot understand. He, uh, the blood and the water came out of the of the wound. 
How is it possible? <laughs> you, don't, you don't try this at home. <laughs> I was supposed to say that you try this at home, but don't, don't try this at home. You have, never, you have never seen yourself, your wound come with, uh, with shed blood and water at the same time. It's only until today when medical science is so advanced that we understand there is this possible explanation when a person's heart is broken water and blood will separate not only is the cross cruelty uh, does the cross the cruelty of the cross end there if you go to the bookstore you buy a, a picture or a cross you will see this they have this they have this Jesus there on that cross because we are uh, we are more modest you will see that he has, he has a loincloth covering a person who's crucified, they would have nothing on them. They would be naked. So Jesus was buck naked. You know why? You know why? So for, it's for people to see his shame. But we are modest. That's why we put coverings there on Jesus. In reality, in reality, that was not the case. Why is it that the Lord, uh, or our God, chose this kind of method for Christ to die. Not only is it so, so painful, so difficult, but it's so shameful. Probably, you probably say that this is the method how Roman people kill uh, people who are not their citizens, so we have nothing, no, we can no, do no. nothing. 600 years ago, look at the book of uh, Isaiah. In chapter 53, verses 3 to 6, He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, had gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. All the sins of this world was placed upon Christ. All the iniquities of this whole world, Jesus bore it upon himself. All the shame that this world has was upon Christ. So all the sufferings that should have been ours for our sins was upon Jesus. G the cross is the method that, Jesus, uh, that the Lord has chosen for the fulfillment of His work. Because our sins will bring us so much shame. And all our shame has been placed upon Christ. But we thank God. You know, after Christ was crucified, the essence of the cross completely changed. Right now, the cross becomes a symbol of love. If you look at the ambulance, there's a cross. Red cross, Red cross there's a cross. You go, you go to the church, you go to the hospitals, you'll see the cross. And something very unique. And a lot of men, a lot of women would use the cross as a pendant for their necklaces. Just imagine the origin of this. This, is, this should have been something very shameful. What has, what has transformed, what has changed for it? Because Jesus died on the cross for us. In Ephesians 2 verse 16, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God and through the cross by which he put to death 
their hostility. The cross reconciled everyone. You know how meaningful the cross is. It's just two beam together. When you, when you look at the horizontal beam, it talks about the reconciliation between God and man. But if you are to look at the horizontal part of the beam, that is the reconciliation between mankind. The cross has reconciled us from all our hostilities. And love has won over hatred, and justice has won over whatever wrongs that were done. You know, after Jesus uh, was resurrected and he showed himself to the apostles, Thomas Thomas wasn't there. And Thomas said, He refused to believe that Christ was resurrected unless, unless I am able to touch his wound and touch the wounds on his hands. Until that happens, I will never believe. And he was just like any other man in this world. Unless I see it for myself, I will not believe. And if you ask people to accept Christ, some of them will say, show me who Jesus is. After seven days, so after seven days Jesus appeared again. And Thomas was there. And Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, Thomas come. Come here. Touch my wound. Here are my wounds. Here are my wounds. Touch them. Thomas was so afraid. So he prostrated himself before God. Uh, Jesus he said, My Lord, my God. It was the first time, if you like to look at the Bible, that Lord and God is uh, placed together in one sentence. You are my Lord and you are my God. Like, right now, I'd like to ask you one question. Jesus is resurrected. Because he had this glorified body now. Why is it that he still has these wounds? There must be something wrong. Imagine, Just imagine. We, are, we had surgery done. When we go to heaven one day, are, are you my wife or are you my husband? So you would like to open to see if their wound is there. Yes, yes. In the past, he had the surgery done there. Wouldn't that be so hard? But since Jesus has been resurrected, why was there wound, uh, marks of the wounds there? Let me ask you, why? 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 I fail to understand this. If you have an answer, please let me know. Until one day, as I was singing this hymn, suddenly I understood. You know what this hymn was? This is a very old hymn. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Heal my ransom, soul shall find rest beyond the river. This is a very old hymn. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Till my ransom, soul shall find rest beyond the river. Only the cross can cleanse us of our sins. Only the cross is our glory forever. And I found this to be the perfect explanation when we see the wounds on Christ. This is not shameful. But in fact, this is his glory. Be my glory ever. This will be our glory forever. Jesus died and shed blood for us. And he was afflicted, and his wounds are assigned for us. Dear church, in the future, when we stand before the Lord, I don't know how much wounds would we have uh, be accumulated for the Lord. 
these will be our scars. Some of them may be external scars. Or they may be internal scars. But please remember, the wounds we have uh, we have uh, we have gotten from for the Lord will become our glory. Paul said, I know of nothing else except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's why Paul said, when I come before you, I'm filled with fear and weakness. Why? Why? Because I have decided to preach God's word and no longer depend on my human eloquence and wisdom to do it. I would just depend on Christ and His power, His gospel. You know, the way of faith would be filled, would always be filled with fear. Try it if you, start, if you step, step out in faith. You know what kind of uh, how, how, how we can compare the way of the faith? It's just like a, 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 a stretch of very calm water. It seems like we can walk on it. But you know for a fact that you cannot walk on water, that you would sink. But that is the way of faith. Jesus walked on the water. And that is the way of faith. That is the cross. It is the method of God's word. Because the cross removes all, human, all man's fleshly ways and letting Christ dwell as first place. The last. the last one. The wisdom of the cross is the demonstration of the Spirit's power. Look at uh, verses 4 and 5. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. My message, my preaching. My message and my preaching. In the original text, the, uh, the message there, is, the original text is the word logos. logos. Logos is the word. The words that I preach to you, the message is the logos. In my preaching is called kerygma. What do we mean? The word of God is Logos. But Kerygma is God's word being preached. When we hear God's word, it's no longer Logos. It, it's transformed to something else. From Logos to Kerygma, there should be a channel in between. Preachers, we are that channel. Christians, you and I, we are the channel. Through our lives, we proclaim God's word to other people. Paul said, when I preach the word of God, the Logos, to you, I, use, I do not use human wisdom. I don't use human method. Nor do I use eloquence. Because during that time, because the Greeks depend on eloquence for their debate. And Paul said, I will no longer use this method. I will only depend on the Holy Spirit and its and the Holy Spirit's power for me to preach God's word. The very first martyr for the, the Christian faith the early, uh, during the early church was not a preacher, but, a, but, a, but uh, was not an apostle, but a deacon in the church. Stephen. It's the deacon Stephen. But Stephen, but Stephen said, Stephen, and uh, this was said about Stephen. They could not stand up against the wisdom that Spirit gave him as he spoke. Stephen, 
speak, uh, Stephen did not speak with eloquence. Rather, he spoke with the wisdom of the Spirit. Uh, let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. Because our gospel uh, came to you not simply with words but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. It's not dependent on our power or our wisdom. I'm sure a lot of us have this kind of experience when you ask, when we would like to invite somebody to accept the Lord. It's hard, it's very difficult if we only depend on how well we speak, regardless of how eloquent you may be. If that person refuses to accept, he will refuse to accept. You know why? You know why? the gospel, sharing the gospel is a spiritual warfare. Look at 1 John 5.19. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We are trying to grab somebody out of the control of the evil one. How then can we depend on our eloquence to, to save them? That's why we need to depend and trust on the power of God. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you believe this or not. Each one of us who have accepted Christ, we are a miracle. And because if we are to share to other people, depending on ourselves, we will not be able to do it. When I accepted the Lord, it was a miracle. I have heard of the gospel for five years. After high school, I left the church. I left the faith. And for the next seven years, I did not step into a church. Because during the, my studies, I had good grades. I was good in sports. Every year, I would have received gold medals. During that, there was a certain year, I had received seven gold medals. I was the overall uh, best medal uh, awardee for the church, uh, for the whole school. And I was full of pride. One time a person shared the gospel with me. And you know, I still remember how I responded to that person. And I, I said to that person, only as somebody as dumb as you will accept Christ. Because that person was doing poorly in academics. And you're preaching to somebody who's good in academics like me. Just a person just like me do not need Christ. That's how proud I was. How can somebody like me accept the Lord? After seven years, After seven years I really, un until now, cannot understand. Somebody invited me to the church. I have no idea why I went. So as, as I sat there, there was, a, there was a woman who preached during that day. She opened the Bible. She preached about John 3.16. It's a very familiar verse in the Bible. And I was, for the five years, when I was in grade five, I already know about that verse. But I don't understand why. When she spoke about sin, in my mind, just like a movie, there was a movie showing all the sins that I've committed from my childhood until that day. And the more I viewed that film, that, that movie that was playing in my head, the more shameful I felt. But when she spoke about God's love, tears just flowed from my eyes. I have no idea why. And when she asked who wants to accept Christ, I immediately raised my hand. If today you ask me, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. I, until now, I still not can comprehend why I did what I did. 
So after I went to church again and again, I met this person. I don't know this person. But that person knew about me. You know how he, he knew about me? Uh, aren't you the person who wept uncontrollably before? And I said, yes, I am. And I became well known for, being, for, for weeping. But if you ask me, I don't know why. This is the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. The cross is not dependent on human wisdom. It is the proof of the, of the, uh, or, or the evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit. So, so each one of us who have accepted Christ, that is the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. I would like to share something with you. You know, in, uh, we use the word missionary. That's the Chinese equivalent for Son Kao Su. You know, before 1949, we don't call, uh, as Chinese, we don't call missionaries Suan Kao Su. But we call them Tuan Kao Su. In English is the same word. There's, there's no difference. In 1949, before, during that time, most of those who were missionaries were Caucasians. When we see them, we call them Tuan Kao Su. We don't call them Suan Kao Su. After, after, it's only after China reopened again, that's why we call them Suan Kao Su. So what's the, in English, it's the same, but what's the difference in Chinese? If, I would invite you to go and research on this. Before 1949, Before 1949, a lot of missionaries went into China. And they achieved a lot of things. They established a lot of different hospitals in China. They established a lot of uh, schools. A lot of orphanages. A lot of home for the aged. All these were established by the missionaries. But, uh, but something strange. They have done so much work. There were only a few who accepted the Lord. About, during that time, uh, during their survey, about 500,000 to 700,000 Christians only existed in China. That includes the Catholics during that time. After the communists took over China in 1949, and all the missionaries were expelled, after 50 years, China reopened again. And, a lot, and people were shocked. And from from seven seven hundred million to one uh, to one billion uh, Chinese became Christians, and uh, seven uh, yeah people cannot comprehend this number. Imagine from uh, from fifty uh, five hundred thousand to one hundred million Christians. Rather. Why? Why? You know why? You know why? Because before nineteen forty nine, missionary You know how missionaries went into China? They used the foreign influences to come into China. So when they entered China, they signed a treaty. And one of the part of the treaty was they allow missionaries to come in. So after, after they came in, so they are allowed to preach, to work. Of course, this is, this is only a generalization that doesn't pertain to everyone. But most of them were. Majority of those who went there, the missionaries who went there to preach, they felt that they were superior 
to the to the needy Chinese who are there. I am here to help you Chinese. Because you are very superstitious people. You are pitiful. You are people controlled by Satan. So they felt that they go they went there. To be able to help these people. See how I have, how I have established orphanages, hospitals, schools, home for the aged, all to help you people. But the result of their work is very little. After 1949, so after the church has closed door. But we cannot imagine. A different group of people rose up. Underground church. We call it the underground church. These are the underground churches. Or we call, call it the family churches. These are people who have little to no education. Missionary. But these are the true missionaries. You know what they did? For example, when I'm uh, when I'm uh, preaching and I accepted the Lord, uh, when when I'm preaching, uh, I, or rather in when I accepted in uh, in believe in Christ in uh, in uh, after I accepted the Lord in Gangzhou, so I would receive a little training. And I would be sent out to Shanghai. So you are now the missionary in Shanghai. A lot of similar cases happened. So it was they, they sent out people for, to all over China. And the home church has no means to support these people. They don't have the finances. There, there are no mission organizations during that time. There are no support. You go there and work. And then as you work, you support yourself while preaching the gospel. Majority of them, they went to these agricultural villages to, to find work and to preach. So when it was open, majority of those, majority of those who accepted the Lord were from the from the provinces from the agricultural villages rather than the urban cities. If you are to look at the, the records there, you would be surprised. It's filled with miracles. You know, if you are to preach with those people with little or no education, if it's not the work of the Lord, you don't know how, how they were able to do it. These uh, miracles filled the villages. That's why those who accepted the Lord grew in number. A family church would have a thousand plus members attending it. What's, whose work is this? This is the work of the Holy Spirit. The wisdom of the cross is the proof of the work of the Holy Spirit. So, May the Lord help us. The cross it's not dependent on your eloquence nor your wisdom. Because the, uh, the, gospel, the cross is about uh, the, the mystery of uh, the wisdom of the cross is about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We need the Holy Spirit to prove this to us. May the Lord help us. Next week, let's look at the cross from God's point of view. We will look at it from the aspect of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And how amazing the wisdom of the cross is. May the Lord help us. Let's pray. Lord, as we come before you, we indeed are people who are in need of your saving grace, Lord. Amen. By ourselves, by our wisdom, by our own effort, we cannot share you and your word to other people, Lord. Fill us, Lord, with your spirit. Help us, Lord, to be able to live a life that truly honors you so that we will be living Bibles. We will be living gospel for other people to see. And our lives would show this fragrance of you, will reflect you so that other people will thirst for you and want to know you through our lives, Lord. This is not because of our greatness, but it's because of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in their lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your, the cross.
cross, we thank you, Lord, for what you did for us, even though we don't deserve it. You love us and you died for us, Lord, so that we will be saved. Help us, Lord, to live our lives uh, with love and to be able to repay you for what you did. This is our prayer with thanksgiving.